Hello and welcome back to Furious Driving and if you're one of the 30,000 or more people who watched the introduction to this new Crown Victoria on my fleet then thank you for watching and thank you so much for all the incredibly kind comments. I really wasn't sure how this car was going to go down amongst my collection of very European things, mostly Rovers, Alfa Romeos, that kind of stuff that's familiar but unusual. Chucking in an oddball giant American V8 Last of the Dinosaurs cruisers, I didn't know if it's going to be popular or unpopular but as I run this channel purely for my own entertainment more than anything else I'm very glad everyone agreed it was a great decision and thank you to everyone who sent some amazingly good tips like for example it doesn't have an exhaust leak those are just uh, drains in the in the mufflers so that's a, a good thing to know now getting on with this car I can't drive it on the road yet because it's not UK road registered with the DVLA yet and because I can't get on with other stuff I'm going to start with a big old cleanup now I haven't forgotten the 200 VI which was my other new little favorite toy. I have now got a head gasket set from Discount MG Rover Supplies that's in the boot of the car waiting to be fitted. I was just waiting for a couple of dry days to crack on with that one. Of course this one has jumped in and, and stolen the limelight a little bit. Sorry little Rover, we'll crack on with Vin Petrol very soon indeed but in the meantime we are going to give this the cleanup of its life. It did spend well the last 20 years in an area which gets very heavily salted and then it spent the last two months sitting on the dockside in New York so again picking up you know atmospheric dirt and dust also when we saw it in the sunshine for the first time on the trailer you can see various swirl marks where I guess it's been through car washes and automated things a few times over its life I'm guessing a car that's a service car isn't going to be treated to a two bucket wash too frequently. So, and I'll say this from the outset, this is a sponsored video. As you may well know, I am a huge fan of Diamond Bright products. I've got pretty much the entire range just here and I use them all the time. If you saw my Volvo up at the NEC, um, I've got lots of comments on how good it looked and that was all thanks to all of this stuff. In fact, there's something I haven't included here. I'm going to pause the video and go and grab it as well. Yeah, these ones, one cut and one finish. One cut is a pretty aggressive cutting compound and one finish is a finishing compound to bring back even the most swirled of paints. And if you saw my Volvo up at the NEC, you will see how good that car looked. That was a um, real swirl fest. It had a dog, I think, standing on the, on the boot lid um, when they were going out for walks and things because you could see all the, the, the claw scratch marks in the paint and it removed most of that. So I've got a good feeling it's gonna do some great things with this. So what I'm gonna do, I'll start off with ceramic ceramic snow foam ceramic blast this will soak the dirt out from the paint i'm going to do a couple of bottles of this because this bottle really is too small after i've done the ceramic blast i'll use ceramic shampoo which is possibly wasted in this case because i'm not going to be using that finished treatment the ceramic compounds do actually leave a little bit of a ceramic trace which helps repel dirt for future washes probably wasted because the next thing is clay bar, which is basically plasticine that you rub over the paint, it lifts dirt out of the paint, you lubricate it with something along the lines of rinse and shine, quick wash, quick detailer, that kind of product. That takes a lot of dirt out of the car, gonna get through a lot of that. Then once that's done, and I've got the paint back to the best finish it can be with no dirt held in it, gonna hit it with the cutting compounds, and then we're gonna go professional, little tiny bottle of ceramic paint protection compound. This is what you put on in a dealer and repel dirt for the future. Then we go on to the inside. I've got two cans of upholstery cleaner because those seats do look like they've seen some life. I've got interior cleaners to get the dashboard and doors looking as good as they can. And while we're doing the exterior clean, I can run some aircon vehicle sanitizer because it's been festering in harbour. Well, the car basically hasn't run for three months and yeah, who knows what could be in there. And finally to finish off, we've got ultra glass and replenish to do the black plastics and the glass areas. Oh, and I forgot to mention, tar away and lift off. If we've got stubborn stains around the car that won't come off, those two will deal with it. And ruby red wheel cleaner to get the brake residue out of these nice chrome hubcaps. And we'll finally take a look underneath these hubcaps and see if we've got the dog dishes in there. Let's hope so. Right, let's crack on. So if you like the look of any of the Diamond Bright products that I'm gonna be using today, then head down to the link in the description below and onto their web shop in time for Christmas. For the car lover in your life, perhaps. Right, now let's first of all, before we get going, Let's fire up this vehicle aircon sanitizer. Just, just smell a bit fusty in here. So, max AC, high. That will now fill the cabin with lots of lovely sanitizing stuff, suck it through itself, clean the aircon pipes, make the car smell fresh kill any bacteria that have developed while the car was in shipping. Right, so that's now doing its thing, cleaning the interior. Let's go and get 
there's no foam going. The car might not look too bad in pictures, but honestly, up close, it is absolutely filthy. I mean, Right, that is all hosed everywhere. So I'm leaving the suds to soak in. I've even done under the floor, up in the wheel arches, everywhere you can think of. Meanwhile, I'm just gonna pry these off and have a look at the wheels. Oh, I've not got the dog dishes. I wanna give these a big wash on the back as well. That's a shame. And while the snow foam's doing its thing, I'm gonna ruby red these things, safe to use on plastic as well as metal. So I'll take the brick dirt off these hubcaps and I'll hose them off in a second. Likewise, I'll do the steel wheels, which always seem to go brown on these cars. I'm gonna to have to get these repainted in black. This will go red over the next couple of minutes whilst it um, does its work. But not much brake dust coming off of these, so it shows that the dealer did a pretty good job of cleaning these things up back in uh, Ohio. A bit of dirt coming off the wheels themselves, but the fact these have gone brown with age does mean I wouldn't be wearing the dog dish caps anyway until I've had them refurbished. So I'll be rocking these hubcaps a bit longer. Now we just hose this stuff off. Now I'm going to crack into the actual washing stage of it, the, actual, you know, the spongy bit, and I might get it done before it starts raining. So I'm using the two bucket method as always, using a wriggly mitt because they are nice for getting into all the crevices, and I'm using the uh, ceramic shampoo because I poured that without thinking I was going to be taking all the ceramic qualities off again when I go in and use the uh, clay bar. I do also have a nice big bottle of regular stuff, which is the, oh, what's it called? Max Foam Shampoo which I would probably would have used it, I've been thinking more clearly. But it's actually quite nice using this stuff because you can actually feel like the slickness of it going on the paintwork. The car does feel very nice. And one thing I found after using ceramic shampoo and ceramic snow foam is even if you, all you do is hose it off and then, then uh, microfiber it dry, it stays clean for longer and it's really easy to clean the next time as well. Is. This, is, this is more heat damage than brake damage, I think, from extensive use over the years. And you can go and pay a couple of pounds and get your car washed somewhere for you, but then you don't really get to know your own car very well. You do this, you get to learn all of your car's secrets. For example, I have got this little rust blister just here, which wasn't visible on the seller's photos, but I will have to get this wing repainted and sorted out. So when you go with the two bucket method, you dunk your sponge, into the suds, you do your sponging, you dunk it into the dirty you pour rinse water, and back into your suds again, having rinsed all the dust and dirt off of that. Yeah, that headlight is loose. That's one of the things I've got to sort out. And I can feel all kinds of bits in this paint, which is why we're gonna go in with the uh, clay bar in a minute. Now, if there's one golden rule of detailing a car to a quality level, it's never use a sponge, unless it's something really disgusting, like these wheels in which case it's fine because you're never gonna put this back on the paint again. Because these old fashioned sponges like people used to use when they were washing a car, washing up liquid, basically it holds the grit, holds the dirt, and just moves it around the paint and causes you more trouble than it's worth. Right, and now just get another rinse off.
Right now, normally what you do next is go in with a microfiber cloth or several and wipe the thing off. However, it's raining. Of course it is because it's, you know, it's here. It's always raining here. So this is basically, I don't know what to call this. Pointless is the only word I can think of. So I'll let the rain stop. I might do the interior while I'm waiting. So the weather is not proving particularly helpful. So I'm gonna give up on the outside for the moment and carry on with the inside. This is basically why poor old Rover 200 VI VIN petrol has been abandoned over there because I can't really, or don't wanna be starting whipping the head off that car's engine and then getting stuck in a downpour. So maybe I'll get that into a lockup garage somewhere in the interim and then we can start working on that in the dry. That would be a big advantage, frankly. So I will start with the dashboard using the interior cleaner, which is great stuff. It's really easy to use. I've made a massive improvement on Quentin the convertible because that car was disgusting where the roof had been missing on it for seven years. And if you can imagine how much atmospheric dirt a car collects in seven years, think a little more than you're imagining. It's a lot. So this is really easy to use. Squirt on, wipe off, away goes the dirt. Oh, a bit of squirtage. And suddenly it gets a lot cleaner. Do you like my little friend who's uh, joining me for the ride in here? Now this, okay, looks a little bit used. It's one I've been using for a little while. Is such a handy thing for getting into all the crevices. It is the interior detailing brush. So you can get all the dust and stuff out of your air vents and into your little nooks and crannies. Make everything look fresh and lovely. Now I was thinking of living with this four button radio, which is no cassette option, but the volume control is really dicey. You turn it up and it goes down, you turn it down, it goes up. Sometimes it does the opposite. It's a bit of a pain to be honest. It does work well enough to get the major BBC stations and get radio one and two and that kind of thing on it. Radio four, um, so you can listen to stories and pop music. God, look at, look at that coming out of there. So you want to get into your crevices in your car when you first get it. It's a lot of crevice grunge. But people do keep asking, what am I going to do with this car once I've got it on the road? And to be honest, the answer is basically just drive it. I'm not going to use it as a daily car, 4.6 litres and not exactly frugal. But it's a big comfortable thing with a decent sized boot that's designed to be driven a long way. It's got airbags, it's got ABS, it's a safe car to be in. So, you know, I'm not planning on crashing it, but you know, if the worst happened, it would do its best to protect us. So I just want to use it as a... That's transport for the most part. I take it to a lot of shows because people just don't see these cars in the UK. Um, looking on how many left .co UK, it shows 76 Crown Victorias, but it doesn't say what shape they are. And maybe if I can get some film and TV work out of it as well, then it can carry on paying for itself. Earn its keep, if you like. Pay its way on the fleet. Because it's the kind of car that TV and film companies want all the time. If ever a Glasgow or London or something has got to be set up and pretend to be America, then they just need a Crown Vic in the background. You've set the scene instantly and that can yeah, pay for itself, even just sitting parked on a street. Yuck. Now we got the door cards, which are actually surprisingly grubby when you get up close to them. Uh, lots of, well, use over the years, so just douse it everywhere. Now, last time I did a cleaning video, someone said I was using too much of this stuff. Thing is, I want to get into all of the texture and all these, um, soak the dirt out of these areas here, like where there's a, a groove in the plastic.
Now, as a European person looking at this American car, it's always fascinating to see just how chunky the buttons are on American vehicles, where we have, so, not delicate exactly, but certainly a lot smaller controls for things like the push buttons on the radio and the window switches. American cars always have these huge, big jelly sweets. Now, the last thing we're going to do before this uh, microfiber goes in for a boil wash is the sides of the cup holder, which is actually really very gross indeed. It's 20 years of coffee spillages and donut juice. Yuck. That's really quite unpleasant. I did see something interesting there. It says soft cups only in this cup holder. So I guess it doesn't like big metal cup holders or cups going in there. Yuck, that is, right, this, this is now spent. I'm guessing, looking at that ashtray, this car has been smoked in at some point. Right, that's now it for this cloth. This is now going on a boil wash. This interior does look so much nicer already. So we're gonna bring out the upholstery and carpet cleaner and let that work while we go and give the back seats a quick wipe over. I'm dreaming of a white Christmas. That's enough copyright, I'll step in after that. Basically you spray this literally everywhere, literally. Fabric side bits, the tweedy hard material on the front. Let it soak in for a couple of minutes. Then go get some warm water and a sponge or a, some other fabric clothy material. And then it will lift out all the dirt. In fact, what I can do in fact, what I will do is, once I've sponged it with a wet, um, spongy thing, I'll then go and get the wet and dry vacuum cleaner out of the garage, and then we can s extract some of the dirty water from the seats. Now, hopefully, it goes without saying that if you're gonna be doing this particular job, make sure the car is parked where it can be sat for, or for a day or so, while the seats dry out after you've finished because obviously they're going to be damp when you finish washing them. Now while that works, it's magic in the front, I can come back here, grab myself a bit more interior cleaner and absolutely a clean cloth because that front one was pretty manky after the ashtray and give this another quick wipe over. Again, it's not horrifically dirty because the car dealer, I think, did give it a bit of a once over over in Ohio. But obviously there are still a few marks and things, so yeah, it's a bit a bit grubby still, but thankfully not really marked at all. So it's not had a hard life. It's not had lots of big damaging items put in the back here that have made a mess of it. There is a dead moth and two dead wasps in the back there. I don't know if I should admit to that or if I'm breaking the law by importing wildlife. The floor looks like it's been kind of sponged clean already. So I'm just giving it a quick wipe over. Not too bad actually. <laughs> cleaner than the uh, parts of the dashboard, in fact. So this bit is generally surprisingly nasty. You think, how dirty can a car seat be? Give it a couple of ring outs and the water is generally pretty disgusting. The only nice thing of this is the fact that the water is also very warm. So I get nice warm fingers doing it. And that, is what I just sponged out of the seats. Never mind what I vacuumed out as well. That's just gone down the drain and it was even darker. So yeah, it's amazing what you find in your car chairs. Really it's the kind of thing you don't want to think about too hard. Right, so the rain has now finally stopped. That did give us a chance to go into the interior, which now looks really good. Although I have had to go and put a dehumidifier in the car. And this is the first time I've had a car wide enough to put a dehumidifier between the front seats because there's so much space in there. In fact, I'm going to go look for the fan heater as well in a minute to help that work a bit more efficiently. So now picking up where we left off, I'm going to get the water off the car and go in with the clay bar. I'm going to use a water wizard rather than the uh, microfibers just to get this car dry very fast indeed. So I've tried the car off again. It keeps on raining every time I try and do anything. Super not helpful. So I'm now gonna go in with the clay bar. Now, 
if you've ever seen clay bar before, it is an amazing thing. It's basically like a plasticine putty stuff, which starts out looking fresh and white like that. And by the time you're finished, it looks like that. Because basically, as you rub it over the paintwork, the dirt and contaminants that are in that paint stick to this stuff and come out on it. So you keep on turning it and turning it so you don't get stuff rubbing against the paint and scratching it. And it's amazing. Now it really helps for the stuff to be nice and warm. So I left this actually on a radiator before I started to get it going. And then once you're ready to go, you use some, some kind of lubricant, rinse and shine, any kind of quick detailer, instant car wash kind of product is ideal because it gets, I say lubricates the whole situation. Rub it over the paintwork, which beforehand you can feel is a bit rough and you can feel high points, bits of stuff stuck into the paint because paint has a texture, it's microscopic, but it has a texture like skin. And even just that one tiny um, look like that shows how dirty that already is. That's just from one tiny area and one quick pass over. If I do that a little bit more, we will see a lot more dirt come out of this. This isn't dirty dirt. This is like atmospheric dirt. So even if you wash your car regularly, there is stuff in the air that bonds into the paint and just regular washing won't take out. So even on a regularly used car, a regularly washed car, once a year, it will do your car a favor and make the car feel an awful lot nicer. That now feels like glass compared to, well, a bit of rough paper really. And this means that when you move on to the next stage, the, the cutting stage compound, there will be less stuff or no stuff, hopefully, in the paint that will stick to your compound pad and scratch the paint, even a tiny, tiny microscopic level, so you don't get swirl marks. Yeah, that now, even after that really quick pass, that feels so soft compared to... I wish there was a, a way of measuring this to demonstrate the difference, because that is just like feeling a mirror, and that is like rubbing your hand over a rough piece of cardboard. It's times like this, as I start on this first quite big panel, I wish I'd gone and got another mini instead of a big thing like this. So you keep turning, you keep going crossways on the directions you've gone, and you keep using plenty of the lubricant so you don't mark it So this car is too big, I can barely reach the middle of the thing. And that is just from one panel, that is only the bonnet, not even the rest of the car. And this is the car I washed yesterday, having snow foamed and then sudded and sponged. So yeah, it's, it's amazing how much dirt is actually trapped in the paint and won't come out unless you use this kind of physical method, which does it in a completely non-destructive, non-damaging way. So the paint now feels so much smoother. It's raining again, by the way. Uh, what you will find though, is that horizontal surfaces do attract more dirt than side vertical surfaces, simply because they're, they're there catching the dirt that's falling out the sky. So you will get more out of the bonnet and the roof and the boot lid than you will out the door sides, for example, which I now need to go and do. Okay, two things. First of all, I am fighting a losing battle with the weather, so I might have to give up in a minute. But secondly, and more importantly, I just demonstrated something really, really important. I just dropped this on the floor, which means this is now going in the bin, because it's picked up gravel, and that's going to put scratches in the paint. That's why you always break your big lump into smaller lumps that last longer, for one thing. Also, if you do drop it, it's not game over. Golden rule, if it goes on the floor, it goes in the bin. Well, do you know what? This looks incredible already. I'm really, really impressed at how well it's come up with just the three stages we've done so far. And it looks absolutely amazing. I've not even touched the cutting compounds yet, which I'm about to do now. And what it's shown is the paint is actually in pretty good condition overall. I, I thought when I saw it on the back of the trailer coming home that it was gonna be a bit swirly in quite a few places, but I think that was just swirls in the dirt, giving me the bad impression. There are a few problem areas. There's a lot of stone chips on the bonnet. There's a few scratches on the boot lid and this front bumper and the rear bumper have got lots of little marks. In fact, it looks a bit like that front bumper damage not so long ago. It may have ridden under the back of a truck or something because it looks 
a little bit scuffed and lined on the top of the bumper. So I'm going to hit it with the one cut. There aren't many processes you can do on the outside of a car in the pouring rain, but clay bar is one of them. And it now feels basically like glass when you run your fingers over it. The car looks so much shinier because there aren't those little impurities, those bits of dirt embedded in the texture of the paint. And you could just polish it to this point and be done. But I'm going to go with the cut first. So here on the front bumper, we've got these little striations all across the top, a bigger mark just there, more marks in the paint just there and there. So I'm going to hit this area here first of all, see if we can bring this back without needing to actually take it to the body shop and get it painted. Obviously with one of these things, you need to go gently and keep it moving so you don't burn the paint. Now like on a Mondeo, these headlights are just held in with these retainer clips which is slide up uh, easily. <laughs> Those are quite deep scratches, but I think it's improved at a touch. I'll work over it a little longer. Those scratches are a lot less visible than they were. They are still visible if you get up close, but you know, really, you have to be looking for them now. So that's a big improvement there. And I'll move on to the rest of the bumper and the rest of the car. Those two are too deep to really polish out just because they've gone right down to the base plastic. So, but I've made them look a little bit smarter anyway. So well, let's have a quick try with this headlight. Wow, that's actually come up quite nicely. That has made quite a big difference to the headlight. These lamps were quite cloudy and I was half considering maybe I would have to replace them. And they're not expensive at all and really are about like 30 pounds plus delivery. So if I can bring them back to this kind of brightness on the front, that's a big saving. And these have still got the Ford logos in them whereas the replacements don't. Cool, look at that. That is enormously improved. You can see little tiny, tiny, I don't know what you call it, crisping of the plastic. But overall, that's so bright and clear. There you go, I'm hoping that shows up on the camera, but that isn't as faded as this one was, but that is a bit yellowed, a bit faded out. This one is an awful, awful lot crisper and shinier than that one. There's that one's got a big scratch in it as well, which I'm gonna see if I can take that out too. Let's see if we can't get that scratch out of this headlamp unit. Well, I'll tell you what, I've not managed to get the scratch out, but that looks so much brighter because it was really quite yellowing before. And now it does look rather smart. And also, all that vibration has moved a lot of this, well, it's orange colouring element of um, a previous light bulb, which has filled the lens area. It was all just sat in that front corner looking really scruffy. So that's a... Uh, Another big improvement, well, an improvement. Now, interestingly, this is a twin filament bulb in here. So this is an indicator and a running light. So lots of very fine scratches, little stone chips. I'm gonna see if we can take a bit of that out of the, of the paint, make it look a little bit better without having to resort to painting the bonnet which I don't want to do. That does look better actually. Trouble is it's so big, that's only half the bonnet. So the boot or the trunk lid is another area with lots of little tiny fine scratches on it. I'm not quite sure why it would have loaded up quite so many of those. Now you notice I'm doing this thing with the wire. It's not just to make me look really cool, which obviously it does. It means the wire doesn't scratch on the paint and add extra scratches to the scratches I'm trying to take out of it. I 
Now I wasn't going to do this tool with one cut, but there are some very fine scratches I've noticed in this upper panel, so I'm going to try and take them out with the one cut. Well, I said I wasn't going to go and do a one cut on the entire car, but you know what? It takes it to such a deeper level of shine. I thought, you know what? I am. There are little tiny marks all over the car, and this will take them all out, and it will give it such a deep, deep shine. I called this car Fern Green the other day by mistake. It's not Fern Green, it's Aspen Green, which is a very, very dark, deep metallic, and it's a kind of car that really does benefit from, you know, a deep, deep shine. So, well, this might amuse you. You know, I said a couple of times that this car is on the big side. I can't reach the middle of the roof unless I'm standing on this. And this is surprisingly hot work, so I've lost the jacket down to the sweatshirt, and this is a surprisingly appropriate shirt I've put on today. Uh, I bought this in New York in March or February 2002, not long after September 11, when all the money from anything FDNY, NYPD went straight to the forces and the charities, because obviously they'd lost a lot of people, and the police and the fire department were absolute heroes around the world from New York from what they did on September 11. And the Crown Vicks were absolutely everywhere around the city, and I do wonder if that experience visiting New York back then did influence my affection for these cars a bit. Well, the process for one finish is basically the same as it is for the one cut. The only difference is that it's got yellow writing on the bottle and the stuff that comes out is purple. So we've got a purple cloth to go with it. Beyond that, this is a much finer, more delicate cutting compound, which gives a lovely, shiny, smooth finish to the paint, which is already pretty shiny and smooth. This will be another level. And of course, more, more microfibers. This should look incredible when I've buffed this up. Now that is shiny and the smooth feeling on the back of your hand is very, very slight, but you can actually perceive an increase in the smoothness. I don't think there is like a measuring rating for a level of smoothness, but this is very, very, very high on that smoothness rating. Right, bit of a finishing touch. The car does look amazing, but these hidden areas, which I couldn't do before because the lights were installed, they can get cleaned with the uh, rinse and shine. Now I'm finished doing everything else with the cloth. Let's face it, we want it to go back together neat and tidy, don't we? Right, we are done. I'll tell you what, I am knackered. That is quite the effort going around the entire car multiple times with the GDA sander. Well, dear, apologies, not a sander, actually then hand buffing it after every pass on every single panel, roof, sides, bumpers, everything. The car looks astonishingly good. The Aspen Green has really, really responded to the one cut, the one finish, and of course before that, the, uh, the ceramic foam and the ceramic wash. But we're not done. I still need to do the glass. I still need to do the rubber, the plastic, and of course we're gonna ceramic coat it in a second as well because we have got to get this car looking as amazing as possible. Now one of the few things we've got left to do is to get the windows properly see-through with some ultra glass, which is a really nice quality window cleaner. Well, we've got all four windows wound slightly down, we can do the top edges of them. So the inside and the out are very nice indeed. I'll wind them up fully in a second to do them all the way around. So now one thing that the uh, window cleaner can't take out is this number. And if you are gonna drive your car back from the port and take it straight to an MOT, one thing you should take is some kind of razor blade or Stanley blade 
to get this white paint off the windscreen because you will get pulled over by the police for it and it's not easy to get off. Now I wish I'd done that before I washed the car. <laughs> now I wish I'd done that before I washed the car. Now this final stage is normally done professionally but I'm going to be doing it myself today. I've had special training from Diamond Bright so I know what I'm doing. This is ceramic performance paint protection. This is a, a professional ceramic glaze which will get into the pores of the paint the rough surface at a microscopic level and put a smooth glass-like surface over it so dirt cannot actually bond into that paint and it just falls off effectively, keeps the car clean for a very long time, dirt just rinses off in the future and especially as it's a big thing living outside that will help keep atmospheric and road salt dirt off the car for a longer period. So what we need to do is first of all degrease the car with the panel wipe that's provided, wipe that off and then apply this and then buff that off. So now check out that shine. You could go swimming in that. That is so deep, that gloss. But we're not done yet. One final thing, the replenish. There's not a great deal of trim on this car, but the black stuff we have got, the radiator grill, the mirrors, the tires, gonna give them the good old finisher job with the replenish. Now this stuff is brilliant. It absolutely transforms black plastics. It just brings a, such a deep gloss out of them. On my Mini, which Minis are famous for their black plastic going gray, it's just the only thing that keeps it black for any length of time. And for the finishing touch, we do of course need a number plate. Okay, the car's not actually registered yet, but my friend Darren did send me through an Ohio license plate that had been living on an actual Ford Crown Victoria. So I think for the finishing touch for today at least, it can wear this plate again. Job done. And now, the big reveal. Let's look inside. The interior has come up so, so well. The dashboard has scrubbed up really neatly and the seats have given up so much dirt that now they look really lovely and fresh like, well not quite new obviously, but like a very, very clean car indeed. This vinyl rear seat obviously scrubbed up really nicely and these rubber floors are no problem to keep clean either. They just wash clean, which is how they're intended. Inside here, it looks and feels and smells so, so fresh. It didn't smell bad before. It just smelled like a car that had been shut up for about two months. But now it's fresh as anything. I just need to replace that steering wheel with a new one. Maybe one with cruise control on it, see if we can get that to work on the car. Well, this car does now look absolutely incredible. And thanks to that ceramic glaze, it's gonna stay looking incredible for a long time. To be honest, it probably looks better than when it was on the dealership at Ford. They wouldn't have put this much effort into cleaning the thing back then. Now I just need to get the thing road legal and I can go out and actually enjoy driving it. Thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed this, please do hit like and subscribe. And if you like the look of what these products can do for your car, then head over to diamondbright.co.uk. The link is in the description and see what they can do for you as well.